Professor Tim Spector, uh, welcome to uh, our Spotlight series. And uh, you're a clinician scientist, and your main interest, I gather, is in twins. Um, do you want to just tell us a little bit about how that's really furnished your academic uh, research questions over the last number of years? Yeah, well, I've been studying twins for oh, nearly 30 years now, <clears throat> since I first came to uh, King's, and we now have 15,000 twins, and my whole department basically works on this, about 70 people. We've produced about 800 papers, and uh, essentially we've used twins as a model to study any interesting common disease that comes along. And over the years, we've looked at genetics, epigenetics, uh, more recently, the gut microbiome and uh, nutrition. And so it was logical that when the COVID crisis came up, we would start to use the twins to look at infection and how much of this virus and the symptoms were due to nature or nurture. So tell us a little more um, of how that interaction with the twins is informing uh, our understanding of COVID-19 as an infection and the symptoms it causes? Well, on the, on the 24th of March, we um, gave the, the twins uh, an email sending, saying, please sign up and use this app, tell us about your symptoms. And so over uh, three or 4,000 of them uh, used the app to, to say whether they were affected or not affected. And we managed to keep tracking them over time. So we now know which of them had various symptoms that was, were, were classical or non-classical. We put these into algorithms. We worked out the predicted numbers that had had it. And then using the twin model, of comparing identical twins with non-identical twins, worked out that about 50% of the uh, expressing the symptoms was due to genetic factors. And so that's the first time anyone had actually uh, done a proper assessment of that, explaining to a large degree why we react so differently to this virus. It's probably so not the strain, it's the, it's the inherent genetics. So, so there is an important distinction, of course, with what you've said, that is a genetic basis to the symptomatology, as opposed to the other as yet rather uh, unusual characteristic, and that is what, what is, what is the, genetic basis of susceptibility, susceptibility to the disease itself, your likelihood of actually catching uh, the disease, catching the virus and therefore developing disease. And moreover, the more severe forms of COVID-19. Yeah, well, we couldn't separate all those things out, but what we did see is that um, either getting mild symptoms or no symptoms had a genetic basis. So we couldn't be sure that they were either uh, not expressing something that they were infected with or they weren't infected in the first place. But because we're dealing with a population sample, generally with mild disease, we're pretty sure that we're seeing a genetic effect on uh, susceptibility to at least getting some symptoms that would, that would imply what's going on. So we do think in general, um, it's looking like a heritable trait, like most infections are, to some extent. If you give the same cholera to everybody, only half of the group will get it. And I think the same thing is applying here. But we don't have all the hospital cases yet to fully work that out. Now, now having uh, developed and applied the app for your twin cohort, you've then, of course, made the app available to a wider population. Uh, and through that, um, have expanded the utility of the app. So, just tell us a little bit about that journey. Yes, yeah, so the original idea was just in the twins. We said, well, if it works, let's let's give it to everybody. And amazingly, uh, within 24 hours, a million people had downloaded this app, uh, which was intended just for a few twins. Uh, and we've expanded on that with um, the, uh, the biotech spin-off company, Zoe, or just around the corner uh, in the cut. And uh, we now have over 3 million views in the UK alone, and we've, got it, we've just started in Sweden and the USA, uh, and it's, it's been a huge success, and allows us to uh, use algorithms to predict what are the combination of symptoms on which day will best predict having a positive COVID viral test, 
and this is helping the government in uh, designing their own uh, apps and advising them on where the trends are across the country. And as we get out of lockdown, it's going to be absolutely crucial to we can monitor any hotspots in areas uh, because our symptom app will detect things about a week before a traditional um, track and trace method will do as well. So it's an early warning device that's going to be super helpful. And we've also finding amazing uh, risk factors as well, like drugs like ACE inhibitors showing they have an increased risk of mild disease. Um, we're looking at uh, healthcare workers showing that at 12 times the risk. We've got other data on obesity and diabetes um, and general frailty as well. So uh, each week we're finding some, some exciting new element to it. Uh, just by collecting masses of data on millions of people, and we hope to keep growing those numbers. And then, of course, what you also have is an indication of the number of those three million you described who may well have had symptoms suggestive of uh, the uh, disease and exposure to the virus, and therefore potentially a, a folk who could help and contribute to uh, the therapies that are being uh, talked about. Uh, not least in terms of using uh, convalescent serum. Uh, is, is that something you now have had a chance to explore? Yeah, just just uh, in the last week, the um, blood transfusion service contacted us and said, could we work together with you to get the people you've predicted to have had uh, the disease uh, more than two weeks ago, so we can invite them up, check their antibodies and use their plasma for the trials going on at King's. And uh, that, that's a fantastic circle, if in a way, of how these, uh, all these initiatives uh, by the same university are coming together to work together. And that really emphasizes how much everything I've done has been a team effort uh, from, uh, you know, the spin-off company Zoe that we've been working with nutri on the nutrition field, uh, designing the app. Then the ana analytics, we're working with Seb Olsenaz's team on uh, on the big data, they're coming from the image uh, group and they've been fantastic at, at this. And then we've also got um, Mike Malin's team on the immunology have been helping us uh, design the antibody tests and we're going out to the twins to collect all their antibody status as well in, in real time and see how that those antibodies are changing and how much of those antibody responses are also genetic, which is going to be fantastically important to see how resistant we can get uh, to the virus and helpful for all the vaccines. So it's, and, it's all come together fantastically well, very quickly. And what imagines, and this is probably going to be my last question, uh, there is going to be through this a mechanism by which you can look at what the longer term uh, impact uh, of this condition is on those folk who have been contributing uh, through your app uh, to this data acquisition. Absolutely. So we're we think this is a long haul. We started as a sprint back at the end of March, and we realized this is not going to go away. And this is a fantastic device to really work out what's happening in the whole population. But we also do have a, a project uh, funded by Kings in the in the twins themselves, uh, looking at the effects of isolation, uh, where one, particularly in the twin pairs, where one might be isolated and the other one not. Right. and actually see what their effect on their mental health is yeah. and the long-term health effects. So absolutely, you know, we're getting the tools together to dig in for the long term and really uh, work out all the aspects to this most mysterious of diseases. Well, look, uh, Professor Tim Spector, can I thank you very much uh, for uh, this snapshot discussion and uh, through you, thank uh, your colleagues who are undertaking the work. Thank you very much. My pleasure.